If you're not using version or source control in your Unity projects, I mean, the time for that was yesterday. This kind of goes for any programming projects, but it could also be used for just regular file upkeeping as well. It doesn't have to be programming specific, though that's what it's mostly used for. There's a ton of different technologies out there, Git, Tortoise SVN, TFS, but this video is obviously gonna be focused on Git. It's probably the most popular one in the world, and it's definitely really easy to use. So let's talk about setting it up for your Unity project from scratch, and then we'll also talk about how to pull an existing project down. And the first place you wanna to go to is the Git download page. We actually need to download Git itself. So I'll paste it on the screen here, and you can also just go to the link in the description, but you have Mac, Windows, and Linux versions. I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this. It's pretty much your basic installation. I'm just gonna do the defaults for everything here. There's gonna be a lot of options as you go through the installation wizard, but I would just leave everything default if you don't know what you're doing yet. These can all be configured later on if you really care. When you finally get to the end of the questions, it will start installing. When it finally finishes, I'll just launch GitBass to show you. This is how Git is traditionally used in a terminal like this. And while this is definitely something very useful to learn, chances are if you're watching this video, you're pretty new and you need to use some sort of visual aid. So instead of using a terminal like this and writing out commands, there are UI applications built just to visualize what Git is doing. And while it may look complicated at first, we'll walk through it. And there's a ton of different ones. There's Git Kraken, Source Tree, you can just use Visual Studio with Git as well. I mean, there's a ton of different avenues for this. This article alone mentions 10 different Git GUI clients you can use. Feel free to use any of the GUI clients that are out there or use the terminal, whatever you're comfortable with. But since we're gonna use GitHub, we might as well get GitHub Desktop. And if you're new, I recommend you do as well because it's just simpler this way. And when you're learning, it's better to minimize any roadblocks you could potentially have. So let's go ahead and download this for Windows. When it runs, it'll ask you if you want to sign in. And at this point, we can stop and go to github.com and create an account if you don't have one. And let's talk about what GitHub is. Well, since we're using Git, it would make sense to use GitHub, which is a provider that lets you host repositories. So at the top right, just create an account if you don't have one. I already do. Once you log in and create your account, you'll be brought to your dashboard. And you'll see up top we have a start a project button, or you can go to github.com slash new. And let's go ahead and create a repository. I'm going to call mine git example. You can write a description. You can set it to public or private. It explains it pretty much. If it's public, anyone can see it. If it's private, only people you invite can see it. Private repositories used to be like a paid option on GitHub back in the day. This is like a relatively recent change and they're definitely nice to have. So I like to do private for my own personal projects. And I have some options here. You can add a readme file, which is used for a description of your project. You can choose a license here. And depending on what type of project you're doing, if it's commercial or open source, or if it's free use for everybody, this is where you would set that up here. But regardless of all that, I think the most important one that we wanna start with is add a git ignore. And GitHub has a couple templates that just help get you started. Git ignores are basically files that prevent you from uploading a whole bunch of garbage files to your repository or configuration files, or maybe something that would be a privacy issue, things like that. But what's nice is if you actually click open this dropdown in the git ignore and you type Unity, and it will show up and give you a default template for a Unity repository. And let's go ahead and just create this. And just like that, you created your first repository on GitHub. Now at this point, there's a bunch of different ways you can go to add code up on here. But I'm just gonna show you an easy way I like to do. So now that we have a GitHub account, we can go back to the GitHub desktop app setup. When it runs, it'll ask you if you wanna sign in using that account you created before. I'm gonna authorize it so that it can access my account information. And when you log in and it finishes installing, you now have a couple options at your disposal. You can create your own repositories on your local hard drive. It's typically what I do, but since we've already gone ahead and created this repository through GitHub itself, let's go ahead and use this. So if we go to clone a repository from the internet, I can type in git example and look, it comes up here. You can select this and now we need to select a local path for it. But the caveat here is that you need to select an empty folder. So I can go to my Unity repos folder and call this new git example and hit clone. And now we have a project that's initialized. And so now if you open up this new git example folder, all you'll notice in here is a git ignore file. So in terms of creating a new project, you have a few options. You can create a new project. And when you pick a location to house this project, you can go ahead and select this new git example folder or whatever you named it where you have the git ignore and then create a new Unity project. Or let's just say you already had a Unity project made that you wanted to put in there and get up in your repository. What you can do is go into your Unity project folder and take all the contents and then just move them into this new Git folder. You could also open Git bash in this folder and initialize it, but let's just stick with using the UI tools for now. So in this case, I moved all the guts over to this Git ignore folder. So I just created an empty Unity project, it's brand new. 
Now, depending on what version of Unity you're using, I'm using 2020.3. But in Unity, if you go up to Edit Project Settings and you go to the Editor tab, you'll see this section here saying Asset Serialization, and the mode for me is defaulted to Force Text, which is what you want. But in older versions, it defaults it to Force Binary. So go ahead and set Force Text. And if you're using an older version of Unity, right above Asset Serialization, you'll see Version Control, and the mode you want to set to Visible Metafiles. But in this version of Unity, we actually have it in our own tab down at the bottom. And you see we have the mode set to Visible Metafiles. That's what we want. So this would be the exact same. It would just be up in the Editor tab. But with these two things set correctly, you're ready to go. That's all you got to do on the Unity side of things. Once you have a repository cloned or initialized on your machine, any files that are added or removed from that folder structure is going to get recognized. And I'll show you what I mean. If I open up Git, regardless of if you're using the terminal or if you're using a GUI client, on the left-hand side here in GitHub Desktop, you'll notice that it detected all of these different changes. We have our sample scene that a project starts with. It has all the folders. It has all these assets that come with a standard Unity project. This is what a basic empty Unity project looks like in terms of assets to a repository. And most of these are just asset files, so they're actually pretty hard to read if you click on them. It probably won't make much sense to you. So let's just go ahead and everything is selected for the time being. You can tell by the checkboxes on the left hand side, but you could theoretically just, you know, if you didn't want to submit this one, let's just say you could just uncheck it. But I want everything. And what we can say is initial Unity project commit. And we'll commit it to main. So there we go, we just committed it to main, but you'll notice if we actually go to our GitHub and refresh that there's still nothing in this code base. It's just the git ignore, despite us committing all of those files. So we've gone ahead and made like a save state. That's what a commit more or less is, right? But we haven't pushed it to this online repository stored on GitHub. And all that really means is, is we have a local save state of this commit, and now we want to upload that to the repository. And through this GUI, what we have is two options. When you have no local changes, it has the option here. It says push to origin, or up on the top, it also has a push origin button. So let's go ahead and press that. It'll take a second. And this will basically upload all the commits you've made to the origin. So now if we go back to the GitHub website and we look at our repository, if we refresh this, just like that, we now have our Unity project up here. So let's cover one more thing pretty quickly. In our Unity project itself, let's go ahead and just make a C-sharp script, and I'll just call this player movement. And just for an example, I'll just put a debug.log statement saying start. And so now back in GitHub, you'll notice, now that the initial commit is out of the way with all those project asset files, it's very clear to me to see, oh, hey, I've added this script since then. Here's that debug statement in the start method. We know exactly what's going on here and we want to commit this. And it becomes easier to manage your project this way. So I'll go ahead and make a commit here and say added start debug log. We'll push it to origin. And once again, if we refresh and go into scripts, we'll see we have our player movement here and we can actually look at the script online as well. So that's an easy way of how you can create a new project and push it to a repository online from scratch. But let's say you joined a project that's already in motion and you need to pull down the code base. This is extremely easy as well. So let's go back to our GitHub desktop. There's numerous ways to actually pull down this repository that exists already to your local machine. When you're at the code tab of your GitHub project, you can expand this code dropdown and you can use this URL here through your Git terminal or your other GUI clients. If you had GitHub desktop, like I recommend for your beginners, you know, you can just go ahead and open it through GitHub desktop and it will automatically clone it for you. In your GitHub desktop app, you could go to File, Clone Repository, and find your project, and then clone it to anywhere you want on your local machine. And check this out, I just cloned that. And if I go to this, look, we have our player movement script already set up. So if you have a project that maybe your company or your friends are working on, you just can simply clone it back down from the repository and start working right away. And it's really that simple. There's a lot more you can do with Git, like branching and all these different commands, but you have to take that one step at a time. The basic things you wanna know are push and pull, and clone. So as you make changes, go ahead, commit your changes. And if you ever mess up or you have someone else that wanna work on the project, well, it's really that simple. They can just pull it down or you can revert to an earlier stage. So that's it. That's how you get Git set up in your project in a pretty simple way. But the most important thing to remember is that you should go to my YouTube channel and push the subscribe button. 